Well, just got back. I see the guys are uh, spraying like banshees down here. We got all the ground units going because we got disease in the lentils. Brian's going with the plane. We're also going to have to go over the chickpeas again. So maybe we'll go down and watch them spray a field. Yes, before we do, we should probably get them loaded up. I'm not loading today, so we got Jared here to load. Gonna fuel. Nothing like some good old diesel exhaust fumes in the morning. Makes you feel alive. So we got him all fueled up. Now he's just uh, cleaning out his windows, getting all the bug smacks off of it. Jerry's just finishing up with the fuel for the water in. We're 240 gallons now. Also, these go up and down, so depending on what angle you're running at will depend on uh, your droplet size. All right, we got him loaded, fueled. He's gonna send himself down there, stick his helmet on his head, put a seat belt or two on. Not that that would do you any good if you crashed it, I guess, but I guess, whatever. All right, gonna do a little donut, gonna get a little windy. One day we actually want to pave the whole runway and then we'll make a great big paved area out here for a uh, turnaround. But we're talking two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollars for that, so it's not quite as high on the priority list as some other things. We should probably go watch him take off, that's what I'm thinking. So he's gonna taxi down because the wind is coming out of the west. And I'm told you always want to take off into the wind. All right, he's taxied down. I can hear he's going full power. I'm gonna hide right underneath his wing. Maybe. Ooh, that wing's coming fast. Okay. So I was going to run down to his field, but his field is a long freaking ways away, so I'm not sure how that's going to work. Okay, we're going to hop in my loaner Chevy here because my uh, other truck is getting worked on, getting that headache rack and stuff put in. Look at the cracks on this puppy. I won't complain. And someone smoked in here, I can't really breathe. Seems like when you people smoke in these things, man, you can't get it out of these cloth seats. That's about 168,000K. Anyway, we gotta hit the road jack, or Brian's gonna have that load completely off by the time we get down there. We've, we've got to go. Oh, we've caught up the old Johnny. That's our 4060. Kind of in my way. I wonder if he sees me back here. Hmm. I can't hardly look through this window. Maybe he's gonna let me by. Maybe not. I texted him. I'm like, please, sir, please, good sir, can I get by, good sir, please, please, please. Woohoo! Thank you. You're awesome. Maniac, maniac. Oh, I see Brian. You can't see him because the window's too dirty. That's a nice turf crop, though. Can you guys see that okay? This is how farmers check their crops sometimes. They're like, oh, yeah, that looks awesome. Good enough. Okay hey guys, we're almost there. We're almost there. Oh, we get, oh, 
we gotta we gotta slow this puppy down here. Speed curve. Lean into it. Whoa. You know, Brian kind of came out of the middle of nowhere there. All of a sudden, I could hear something, and then there was a plane. So let's just stop here. Back for one of his passes. See the fog? So let's actually go out and see if we can find some disease. It's a pretty nice crop. So you want to look down here at the stems for one. So it's all green, so that's awesome. And Thracnose uh, is not a friend, or Astakita. And Astakita is not the same, it's Astakita, but we get Astakita in our chickpeas. But what I'm saying is it's not the same. You can't have Astakita in your lentils transfer over to your chickpeas and vice versa. I think I hear Brian coming right there. Awesome. So uh, it's not like you stick, uh, you seed your lentils beside your chickpeas, and all of a sudden they're sharing diseases. No, it's a different strain. Okay, it's a different strain of uh, disease. So you also want to watch for grasshoppers. Uh, aphids are also really bad. See if we can't find some aphids here. I'm also looking on the leaves for a disease. You want to see green stems. You don't want to see brown stems. So we've had some fields that have got about this much brown in the stems. That is very bad. So right now we're just spraying for preventative. You want to see pods. If we get too much rain, you know what happens. They won't stress. Lentils and chickpeas, they need stress. They need some heat stress, some environmental stress, or a little bit of disease stress. But you got to be careful with, the, with disease stress or it can get a little bit too far away from you. And then, boom, you just lost 30% of your yield potential. Or whatever, you know what I mean? <clears throat> they also don't like to get their feet wet. You see the yellow? That's where water laid. Oh, I got a call. So as we're out here crop checking for disease... Oh, shoot, it went, flew away. Where was it? I saw a ladybug. Anyway, ladybugs eat aphids. And I'm going to try to find some aphids here. Maybe you guys see them and I don't see them yet. But ladybugs are awesome. Oh, there's Brian. gonna walk off this headland we're gonna go farther out here here we go so this is an awesome crop you guys our lentils this year look awesome actually all the crops look this is not a normal July nine times out of ten we fight drought this is the ten because it's been cool and wet that is not normal for us what oh here we go here's a ladybug I see him He's awesome. He's our friend. A little bit more about lentils. Lentils and chickpeas are a non-determinate crop, which means as long as it's cool, as long as there's moisture in the ground, they're gonna keep flowering till kingdom come, okay? So at some point, we want heat. We are looking for some 30 degree heat, maybe get a little bit of wind blowing. We wanna stress these things. We want them to put some pods on. Otherwise, they could grow this tall and not have a single pot on them. And that's the same with chickpeas. You could spend all the money trying to keep the disease at them because they'll still get disease. They don't have to have pods on to get disease. You could spend all the money, all the foliar, everything, the planes, the applications, the labor to do it. <clears throat> and at the end of the day, you won't have a single pot on your plant. That doesn't pencil out. So sooner or later, we're gonna want some heat. See, this is what I like to see when they kind of, this is our canola stubble from last year. It kind of props them up. 
And yes, we cut our canola stubble really high. It props it up so that way they don't flop over so easy. These things look really healthy. That's awesome. Oh, here comes Brian. Awesome. Let's keep walking here. Well, you can almost feel a little bit of that. Another ladybug? That tummy's gotta be aphids. There's an aphid. I was gonna say, if there's ladybugs, there's aphids. See him? See it? He's actually stuck in a web, I think. Good for you, guys, so that way you can see him. There's a little baby ladybug. Another ladybug. Oh, there's a grasshopper. That's what I don't want to see. See him? Shoot. Let me get this thing focused here. See, right there. Right there. Right there where my thumb is. He's green. He's sitting on that stem. Grasshoppers are not what we want. They'll actually chew where the pod is stuck up and chew it and drop the pod off. Or, But grasshoppers is something that we have down here. And typically grasshoppers come in seasons. So they've been progressively getting worse. Cool, wet weather typically hinders grasshoppers. Hot, dry weather is typically really grasshopper prone. So we've got the good environment here right now to keep our grasshoppers at bay. But... They all lay their eggs the previous year, so we're actually feeding off last year's eggs. If that makes sense. So typically you want to get your first fungicide application in before these rows fill in. It's a little thin right here. Um, we have 12 inch spacing, so that actually helps keep our... Like you don't really want it fully closed in. You want a little air movement in there. That way it keeps it from getting diseased. While well, it helps that anyway. And then normally you would put your second application of fungicide on if needed be for mold after they all fill in. Oh, here comes Brian. Oh, we might get we might get it. Woo! You can see the mist. Woohoo! A little sticky now. Okay, well, let's wander back to the truck here. The, the 46 is actually out there spraying on some, well, just across the fence, actually. We'll get out of the way here before uh, we're in Brian's direct path next side. Don't worry, you, it's just a fungicide with a little bit of foliar. I put it in my Cheerios every morning. <laughs> so anyway, can't really see much for disease out here, so we're just being proactive and preventative. I'm gonna get the heck out of Dodge and uh, stop wasting your time. You can see it fogging. Here comes the other fogging machine, the 4060. We're just spraying up a storm here. If I had more memory on my phone, I would jump on that thing and do a Rogator one when I was walking all over it. But unfortunately, I don't have enough memory on my phone. I gotta do one video at a time. And with that, I conclude in this video so I can get it uploaded and get it off and get stuff deleted and I can start a new video. You know, this stuff actually keeps me pretty busy, I'm not gonna lie. But, um, thanks for following me around.